Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out to the theater today. My name is Joseph George. I'm the uh, Vice President of Solutions at SUSE. And uh, we totally recognize that we are between you and lunch. Um, so we're going to try and focus on some very interesting things today. With me is uh, Simon Briggs. Briggs, he's uh, um, our EMEA uh, cloud architect. And we're going to spend some time talking today about uh, the applications in your environment. Uh, they're not 100% cloud native. They're not 100% legacy IT applications. So you're going to have to figure out how you make these two work together. And SUSE is a great uh, uh, partner to work with you to make that happen. We've been doing it across Linux. We've been doing it in storage. We do it in OpenStack. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Simon. Thank you very much, George. So thanks, everyone, for coming along. It's great to get opportunity to speak at the OpenStack Summit. Um, it is a wonderful event, and uh, I'm very proud my company, SUSE, chooses me to do this. Um, as has been introduced, I'm a little bit of an OpenStack fanboy. Um, and uh, it's brilliant that SUSE, who I've worked with for many years now, is also a fanboy of OpenStack and what it brings to um, possibilities it brings to the companies that we work with. So. Um, Importantly, OpenStack isn't just a um, upstream community. Organizations like SUSE actually also help very large enterprises get the best out of the technology, and we answer some questions they may have. So this presentation is going to be um, a brief walk through our thought processes around the challenges that our customers have and how we think we're a very strong proposition as a vendor to help you move forward in your journey to, co to get the best out of a private cloud and what that might mean in the future. OK, so we today announced, actually, that our new version of SUSE OpenStack Cloud, as it's called, um, has um, been slated to be released um, back end of the year. We've done a full press announcement, but really, um, this just quickly describes that we are releasing on the Newton code base, um, the, this time with SUSE Open Club, um, Cloud 7, OpenStack Cloud 7. Um, and the, importantly, the biggest um, change within the technology stack is we're uh, incorporating Magnum, allowing Kubernetes to drive um, Docker or system containers sorry, application containers out at scale. And we've got a very strong presentation set up on our booth on D27. So if you want to come along and actually see Newton driving those Docker instances within a running OpenStack cloud, it's actually back in Germany, our headquarters in Nuremberg, um, you can see the elastic capabilities that you're able to achieve. Uh, with that technology. There's some other bits I'll mention as we walk forward, but um, my clickers decided not to play. So um, what, what's SUSE's proposition? Well, first of all, OpenStack's been recognized by those within the community as a, a fantastic vehicle for uh, what we might term as cloud-native technology stacks. OK, so uh, if anyone's familiar with the argument of pets and cattle, uh, very much the kind of cattle-type logic was applied to OpenStack initially. And that's how most organizations probably utilize the technology. Well, SUSE comes from a slightly different thought process. We, for many years, have been delivering open source to companies in a manner which allows it to be um, trusted, performant, secure. We do all the old-fashioned stuff. We're very much the ops part of DevOps in the SUSE world. And what we did was recognize very early on that actually, if you do too much around the cattle and you concentrate on just the power of rapid development and all the things that the DevOps methodology brings to you, you're kind of missing a trick because there is also the ops bit within DevOps, OK? It's still important that the workloads that you drive into your clouds are actually resilient. It's still important that they're secure. It's important the data remains secure. Um, we, we are a Germanic organization by nature. Nuremberg is our head, HQ, and a lot of our thought processes come out of that part of Europe. So we really concentrate in on the security of data and things like that. 
So what we've done is work with the thought process that not only does OpenStack allow you as an organization to um, be revolutionary on transforming your digital um, processes, but we also help you evolve. So why have all your, um, your revolutionary transformation in a silo and all your traditional IT operations in another silo? Some might actually sit between the both and, and make sense to be moved across into a fully performant, fully secure, fully resilient, very um, powerful OpenStack instance. Okay? So that's where we work, and that's the logic that we apply um, where, when we're working. So just to illustrate that more, the man on the left is me as a younger guy. I put, got a bit old, put a bit of weight on, but uh, I, I used to work out quite a lot. So that used to be me working for SUSE in the operational areas. So very much into stability, uh, the HA capabilities within our OpenStack cloud. We were the first to release a fully supported HA component within OpenStack on the control plane. Uh, obviously, now that's extended now with Liberty release for our SUSE OpenStack 6 um, to uh, include the KVM or Zen uh, hypervisors. Another point there is we actually do support Zen. It's not gone away. If you are interested in Zen, SUSE is your friend. Um, so we've also worked very hard with our technology to get to the point that we're moving now in version 7 to a non-disruptive upgrade path. Okay? So upgrade has been a massive challenge within the open source uh, community. And uh, we've recognized it working with our customers because they like working with a company that takes all the traditional aspects of IT serious. And we've been um, improving the upgrade path. And we're now at a point when we release 7 that it should be a non-disruptive upgrade from our version 6. If you were to start using our technology as 7, that, that logic will move forward. There's a subtle reason why that's more complicated than you might uh, realize, because actually, SUSE chose at version 6 to move away from the six-month release cycle. I've banged on pretty hard while I'm stood up here that SUSE is all about reliability, all those operational traditional values, okay? Well, most of our customers weren't very happy with a six-month upgrade cycle. It was a little bit too aggressive. So we've actually worked with those people and our partners, and we've come up with a year-long release cycle, support cycle. Okay, so version 7 is coming out now. A year ago, we released version 6. What that's allowed us to do is extend our supportability of a code base. So we get a full three years supported platform with our version level, which is unique in the industry. Um, but what it also does, it means that when we do an undisruptive upgrade, we've got a leap from Liberty across Metarca up to Newton. Okay, that's challenging. The technologists in our company have worked very hard on that. And we, we are going to release technology code base, which is able to deliver that into our customer base. Okay. We've also got the widest hypervisor support. Okay. We don't just say to our customers and, and partners, we define KVM is the only way forward. You have to use it. We've worked with VMware for many, many years. We've worked with Hyper-V for many, many years. Why not make them fully performant and fully supported with an industrial open stack cloud? We've also worked on the mainframe for years. You might know of SUSE as a Linux on the mainframe. It's a reputation we've got. So why not make ZVM available with compute nodes in the hypervisor, in the cloud uh, options? So all those options are available to customers. And many of our customers look at actually having different levels of service within their cloud delivered by different infrastructure that they have. Okay? We enhance that by making ourselves highly um, interoperable as well. So you can use different hardware infrastructure in the background. Uh, we have great integration with the big um, storage vendors, um, for instance. So you could actually put some workloads data on very high-end um, storage arrays. And you could actually use our SUSE OpenStack, uh, sorry, SUSE Enterprise Serve, um, storage solution, which is Ceph-based, for other workloads within your uh, environment. And what we're really delivering there is choice. But on the other side, we also recognize that organizations are using OpenStack to um, 
to harness the power of transformation. And they are in the game revolutionizing this very slow traditional model that we all seem to have slept walked into around IT service delivery. Okay, now being able to deliver with containers via a orchestration system like Kubernetes um, gives you great power to uh, be able to react to inputs within um, or events within your application profile usage and then drive out on demand massive scale. And then it can flex back again. It's really at a point now where we've got fantastic elasticity with our technology. Okay, not only can we do it on the VM level, but the container level allows us to be even more reactive. And certain workloads you're looking at as businesses will definitely be candidates to utilize that kind of technology. Suze has been in that game for quite a while. Um, we've also integrated Ceph, as I said earlier, and CephFS uh, is now uh, coming on, on board with version 7, allowing us to integrate it with Manila um, to give unified storage um, for your production workloads working in your cloud. Okay. Obviously, we work on other um, areas as well, such as fast deployment and ease of management, but they're the call-out stages. Susan would also like to tell you that we're very open about open source. Okay. I've got uh, one of my uh, directors in the background, Ralph Flax, uh, a leading light in the Linux world. And um, his mantra is that as an organization, we are open about doing business. And part of that is being open to work with partners and ones you maybe wouldn't think would be natural with us. So Mirantis are very definitely our competition on the OpenStack cloud. But you might have seen in August that we, we actually, together with Mirantis, released an announcement um, telling the world that um, we'd come to an agreement with them where they would use SUSE Linux Enterprise Server technology under their, um, their OpenStack uh, technology as their preferred Linux. Okay? The rationale behind that is we're open to other vendors in this market. We think our product's strong enough to compete whilst others can use our technology in, in relationships. Those constructive relationships are even more reinforced if you saw the HPE announcement uh, recently um, that Microfocus, the owning group who owns SUSE, have actually come to an agreement at least um, at a, a very high level with HPE about merger of some of their technology stack. Okay, again, another major vendor in the open source market, a competitor in many ways, but an organization that is a, we are getting closer to with relationships in this industry. And one thing I like to call out is if you think there's probably about five major vendors in the OpenStack enterprise um, ecosystem, and that means three of them are actually using SUSE Linux technology as their preferred li Linux technology. And I think that's great validation of how strong we are. And obviously, I've already talked a little bit about the, the OpenStack announcement on version 7. Whilst we're here, we're also allowing people to get access to um, SUSE's OpenStack training. What you might not have realized is SUSE's OpenStack training is the only training available around OpenStack which prepares you to not only take the SUSE qualification for OpenStack, but you will be able to take the standard OpenStack qualification of the uh, certified OpenStack administrator after following our course. So if you do look to get a, a, a more general OpenStack qualification, SUSE, SUSE's training is a good option to follow. Okay, we've got representatives on our booth, D27, um, and also in the training area out front, we'll be able to give you more details about that. And we are running training, it's fully subscribed during the summit. Um, you might get a seat at the back if, if you want to look, but it's uh, fully subscribed, sadly. One of the other areas, and actually the cloud I was talking about that we've got a demo environment of, is an example of this. We're actually... Um, supporting with version 7, ARM64 technology. It's another case where SUSE is very aware that our customers want to be able to be flexible about how they deliver infrastructure to support the needs of their organizations. And um, the ARM64 technology is going to be supported 
And I raise that because our demonstration of the um, Su SUSE OpenStack Cloud 7 running Magnum is running on some Cavium hardware sitting back in Nuremberg. So it's a really good example of the power of what we're able to achieve. Okay, I've talked at length about the new features and I recognize I've droned on, so time is running out. But no presentation at the OpenStack Summit would be complete without a block diagram of the services that we're, um, we're looking at here. Um, so SUSE uh, is often seen as just siloed around SUSE Linux, uh, but that's the old days. We're now um, active and very strong in the community around network storage um, and hypervisor layer. Obviously, we've got the great capabilities that SUSE Linux Enterprise Server gives us on top of hardware. And we're moving more and more into that top layer that you can see where containers as a service, platform as a service uh, with the Cloud Foundry guys is all becoming relevant. Okay. I've got about four and a half minutes left of your attention. Um, I'll quickly just highlight that we've been in the OpenStack for a long while. You may not have seen us in the community too much, but we've kind of uh, been there in the background. We're getting a lot bolder about our presence. There's a lot of us here during this week. Please connect in to us. Come and talk to us. We learn from you even if you don't become our customers, so we love the conversation. We even like talking to our competition if you're in the crowd. Come and tell us what you think about things. Um, it's an open community after all, okay? Um, some of the credibility story is this um, continuation. So we were the very first organization to bring a fully supported OpenStack to customers as a commercial offering, okay? That was on the Essex release, which some of you may remember. Some of you might be still working on because of the challenges of upgrading, okay? I've got about three and a half minutes. Uh, I wanted to give opportunity for questions from the floor. Um, so if you have any questions, I know it's a daunting thing when you sat in front of somebody in the lights with a, with a headphone on, but I'm more than happily take any questions from the floor if there's any brewing up. If not, I can tap dance. No? Don't want to see me tap dance? No? Okay, well, thank you for your time. It's been wonderful talking to you, and thank you very much for OpenStack putting on a summit like this. It's absolutely fantastic. Cheers.